Hello, my friends. Brett Patterson here, coming at you from the financial capital of the West, that is Salt Lake City, Utah, the beautiful city of Salt Lake. I'm an investment advisor and portfolio manager with Iron Gate Global Advisors. This past weekend, I had a great opportunity to visit the beautiful state of Colorado and to give a presentation to a group of great investors. And uh, there were many people that, that couldn't attend that particular live session in Colorado. And so they requested that we record that session. And so that's what I'm doing now. I'm recording that session. And it's really, it's to give you an idea of, I've been in the investing world for 10 plus years and taught, I've taught a lot of retail investors how to invest and to build a portfolio. This is 10 years of learning, 10 years of, uh, of, of how I would do it, right? After all is said and done and the dozens and dozens, dozens of strategies that are out there, this is how I would build and manage a portfolio. In fact, this is how our firm builds and manages a portfolio. It's the IGGA, the Iron Gate Global Advisor approach to investing. And so that for the next few minutes, we're going to discuss uh, the following. We will discuss the four components to a portfolio. We will hit on sector rotation and where are we in currently in the cycle. And for those that have listened to those presentations that I've done in the past, you know that I'm big on sector rotation. Uh, and for those that, that aren't aware of that, I think you'll learn something new, which will be fun. We'll also hit on the role of options and how they can be used in a portfolio. Very few. One of my, In fact, one of my roles for TD Ameritrade, my prior employer, was to go around the country teaching advisors like I am now how to use options in a portfolio. And I will tell you this, that very few know how. Uh, that's why we taught them, right? Very few know how. And, and very few uh, are implementing it maybe the way that it should be implemented. And so we'll talk about the way that Iron Gate Global Advisors utilizes options to help their clients and their portfolios. All right, so that's the agenda. Now, to start out, let's look at a, just a classic portfolio. Now, this portfolio is built upon those four things that we've already mentioned that we would. I mean, stocks would be the first thing, right? We invest in stocks. We invest in ETFs, which is the sector rotation part of the portfolio. We invest in options. And then there's a component of cash as well. And I'll break down each of those four things and explain to you how we do it and give you some rules and some maybe suggestions if you want to do it yourself, which is great. Uh, but here's what the portfolio would look like. And even to take a step back a little bit here, when a client comes to us and says, you know what, Iron Gate, I want you to do it. I want you to manage my money. Then we will interview them, so to speak, meaning we'll get an idea of their risk tolerance. We'll get an idea of their goals and objectives. Uh, how much money do they currently have? Where do they need to get, right, for retirement or for buying a house or whatever that goal may be? And then we'll, we'll build the portfolio with those four things that you see, and we'll adjust the allocations based upon their goals and objectives and risk tolerance. And so this portfolio that I'll share with you is just generic in nature. It just shows you those four things built inside a portfolio. In the light blue, you'll see the all-cap value portfolio, and that's invested in stocks. That's that's uh, something we'll address here in just a few minutes. Then you've got the other, which is the darker blue, which is that global rotation using ETFs uh, and sector rotation using ETFs. And then you've got that gray sliver, which again is the options for income that we've mentioned. And then uh, a small sliver, which is cash, right? And I'll talk about why we have cash. It may be greater than that. It may be smaller than that. And I'll address what maybe is appropriate based upon certain market conditions. But as far as the options go, and just want to mention this real quick, the options in a world of 0% interest rates where people need income, and I have options for income written there, options can be a great tool if, if it's appropriately implemented. Right, And so don't let options scare you, but actually embrace the idea of options and, and we can help you do that. But based upon the, the personality profile of the individual and again, their goals and objectives, these allocations will change. Meaning this, we might have somebody who just wants growth, 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 
we could have them in 60 to 70% in our all cap value portfolio. And then very little in, in ETFs and, and very little in options as compared to the, the all cap value portfolio. Now, those that are just looking for preservation of capital, maybe we decrease the all cap value portfolio and increase the other areas. And so it's completely different depending upon the individual. And certainly if you have questions on that, you can email me at brett at I-G-G-A dot com and more than happy to address those questions. But as we, as we dissect this portfolio piece by piece, we'll start with the first one being stocks. And as you can see there in the picture, my goal is for you to take those glasses off and clean the lens and give you a good idea as to how we invest in stocks and, uh, and, and provide some clarity. The first thing that I will mention is, uh, is a tweet that I sent out a while ago. And this tweet, it, it, would, it was bugging me very bad of what I was hearing uh, in the press and, and different periodicals and different things. And, and that is just simply a question. Why do the best portfolio managers only invest in a handful of stocks? If you, if you study history, you'll see that the best portfolio managers maybe have, you know, six to 12 maybe stocks in a portfolio. And, and that's it. You, could, you never, ever hear somebody say, wow, that guy is a great indexer. Or that gal is a great index. I mean, you just don't hear that because indexing should be pretty easy. You just buy one or two ETFs and call it good, right? So how do we approach stocks? We approach it uh, from the standpoint of really follow the lead of those that have gone before that have done and, and been incredible investors. We invest in a handful of stocks. And to give you a better idea as to why we do that, here's just a few quotes for you. Well, the first one's from Charlie Munger, Warren Buffett's right-hand man. He said this. He said, wide diversification, which includes investments in mediocre businesses, only guarantees ordinary results. Again, that's from Charlie Munger. We don't look to invest in mediocre businesses in this all-cap value portfolio. We simply don't. We don't want ordinary results. This is a the growth part of our portfolio. We need better than ordinary results. That's our goal. And another quote that I love from Peter Till. Peter Till was the individual, first outside investor in Facebook. He helped start PayPal, just a brilliant mind. And I, and I recently heard him on a podcast, uh, Tim Ferriss podcast, and I grabbed this quote from it. And I love this, and we're going to dissect it just a little bit. He says, they say spray and pray investing because some of so, some sort of portfolio theory. And spray and pray investing, just so you understand, it is indexing. That's just indexing. That's just throwing it out there and hoping it sticks and, and just following the market, essentially. And I love how he says because of some sort of portfolio theory, because academics teach investment advisors and money managers in college this theory, and then it sticks. And those people, they never gravitate away from it. They just hold on to it because it's, you know, because it's, you know, taught to them while they're in college. Well, that's not the portfolio theory we're looking for, especially in this all cap value portfolio. He goes on to say, and sorry for the (laughs) going off there, but he goes on to say in the quote, the real reason people spray and pray in their investing is because they are lacking any conviction in their investments. And I love that because it's so true. If someone does the research and truly understands the business, then they're not going to have 30 stocks in a portfolio. They may not even have 20. We try to keep it at about eight to 10, six to 10. That's our sweet spot. Any more than that? And we might as well just buy the S&P 500, right? But we have conviction in those investments that we do buy. And, and how do we gain that conviction? It's based upon this portfolio philosophy. And when I, when I bring this up, know that I'm just going to hit on these bullets quickly. There's a webcast that my partner, Brian Hunsaker, put together, and I'll include it in, in the notes on our website so you can click on it. But he goes into depth and detail about all of these, and he's the primary manager to this all-cap value portfolio. Great webcast. Listen to it if you want more information on it. But just to break it down, we invest in mid-cap to large-cap stocks that have the following, right? That are 
in a sector and industry that we understand. We don't invest in areas that we don't know. We don't take shots in areas that we don't know. We need to understand it. We need to know how the company makes money. What's the competition, right? We need to know these things. We also need to know if that company has a long-term competitive advantage. And when we say that, and Warren Buffett talks about a wide moat, right? That's that same concept. They need to have a long-term competitive advantage in that they need to have a a kind of a, a again a moat or a a it's it's going to be hard for other companies in that industry to outdo them they've got such a competitive advantage whether it be their brand whether it be their processes whether it be whatever it may be they need to have that competitive advantage and that can be in a mid cap or a large cap right it can be in a big industry or it can be in a small and upcoming industry Never, whatever it is, we need to have that long-term competitive advantage. The third thing would be they need to have excellent management in place. We love good managers. We love good CEOs. We love those CEOs and really look for those CEOs that are shareholder friendly, that, that have their own skin in the game, meaning in large part their, their performance dictates how much they make that's what we like. We like excellent management. The, the meltdown of 2008 shined a light on really poor management. That's not what we're looking for. We're looking for excellent management in place. And that takes listening to conference calls, and that takes reading reports, and that takes, uh, that takes really studying the, the individuals, the CEOs, where they have been, what have decisions have they made in the past, what are they saying now, that's what that and that takes time, right? That takes time, but it's a very important step. This, the fourth step would be those that those stocks and companies that are available at a good price discounted to intrinsic value. And simply put, we want to buy a stock when more or less it's on sell or it's a good value compared to the future growth of that company. We're not going to overpay for a stock. Uh, you know, PE ratios are a popular way to do it. We don't just rely upon PEs, uh, but that's, you know, we're not going to pay something, you know, outrageous as far as a PE goes. We're looking for those low, those low PEs as most people are familiar with. We look for a lot more than that, but that just gives you a sample as to what we look for. Now, the fifth thing is those that are creating, those companies that are continually creating intrinsic value for investors. So for example, we're not going to go out and buy a stock if it's a turnaround story, right? We don't want turnaround stories. We want those companies that are continually growing, that are continually increasing that intrinsic value for investors. That's what we look for. And and we'll sell those companies that stop doing any of those, namely creating intrinsic value for investors. That usually happens first. That's our sell signal right? Also, number four is too, when they become just extremely overvalued and there's something else that we can replace it with that meet all these five criteria as well. That's how we invest in stocks. That's how our, our main portfolio manager, Brian Hunsaker, invests in, in stocks with that all-cap value portfolio. Now, the next slide will show you how that all-cap val value portfolio has done over time. Here you can see since inception, uh, a value of $100,000 since 1999 when Brian first started managing this portfolio. And that's the blue line. May come across purple, purple or blue, whatever that is. Uh, that's the all-cap value portfolio. You can see since inception, it has grown to $396,000. A little bit more than that, $396,000 rounding down. The S&P 500, that same time frame with $100,000 invested is at $186,000. No question which portfolio has outperformed over time. And here's a raw look at the numbers, 1, 3, 5, and, and 10, and since inception. And I'll focus on the since inception. That'll give you the best idea. Annualized returns, which is that, that second, that middle row, far right side since inception, the all-cap value portfolio has has returned 9.62% per year. The S&P, which is the line right below that, is right around four and a quarter. So double what the S&P has done. Now, this is not a, you know, this is not a guarantee that we'll continue to do this. 
these are looking at historical resorts, and, and, and the historic, historical results are just that, they're history. There's no guarantee of future potential returns when looking at this portfolio. But that gives you a good idea as to how we look for stocks and, and the results of doing that. Now, again, if you want more detail on step-by-step -step and how to do this and maybe gives you ideas on how you can do it yourself or if you're more interested on how we do it, then, then definitely check out that video that Brian did uh, for a group of investors as well. He'll dissect each of those steps carefully and give you a better idea as to how that all-cap value portfolio really expand upon which, uh, that which I've talked about. So that said, we'll move to our second piece, piece which is global rotation using ETFs. This is a purely public broadcast and is not intended to be personalized financial advice for any individual's specific situation. Each individual's financial situation is unique, and the topics discussed on this broadcast should not be relied upon and or considered as personalized advice. Specific financial securities discussed are not intended to address any listener's particular financial situation and should not be considered recommendations. This is for educational purposes only. For more information, please contact Iron Gate Global Advisors at info at or by calling 888-591-0334.